in China's most populated city, Chongqing. Twenty years ago, a boy was filmed jogging on the only bridge that crosses the Upper Jiangxi in the city of Chongqing. Two decades have passed, and Lixi still jogs every morning. But now, there's a new bridge for him to cross. Lixi has been an important witness to the monumental changes that the city has gone through. Director Liu, this is Li Xi from the Topography and Cartography Office. Did you get the drawings I faxed you? Li Xi works for an advertising agency affiliated with the Topography and Survey Office of Chongding. His job is to keep the city's maps updated as the city changes constantly. In this map, made in 1982, the urban area was just about the size of Yuzhong, the capital municipality of Chongqing. By 1989, there were five sub-districts. By 2005, we had included all of these areas in the new map. It all wouldn't fit in the new map. There are many more areas today. I don't think we can put them all on the map. But we have a pretty good sense of what it looks like. The Chongqing City Hall is located to the east of the Sichuan province and is crossed by both the Jiangxi and the Yaling rivers. In 1997, Chongqing began to be administered by the central government. Since then, the city has prospered and grown at an enormous pace. Today, it's 2.4 times bigger than Beijing, Shanghai, and Tianjin together. Its growth is so fast that each three months a new map of Chongqing is published. The city is known for the two rivers that have dominated its life. But close to the city, there's a long range of mountains that contribute to its peculiar weather. Weather that has earned the city the nickname of the Oven or Fire Island. It's said that the heat that comes from the mountain ravines and the river's turmoil have encouraged the will and courage of the people. Chongqing could be defined as a city of opposites, a city of water and fire. The Chongqing natives not only are known for their tenacious and strong character, they are also known as the city of beauty. Li Na was born in 1982. Usually, she and her friends began the day like this. I don't like the traditional style or classical looking makeup. I want something more striking. In the modern Chongqing, young women have more opportunities and freedom to choose the lifestyle that they want. Li Na and her friends belong to common families, but they want to stand out by showcasing their beauty. Getting dressed up and being photographed is a hobby that their mothers never would have dreamed of. This is downtown Chongqing. Now this area of the city is full of buildings and shopping centers that give it the feel and look of a modern metropolis. Some youths don't know the meaning of this monument. It was once called the Spiritual Fortress and it commemorates a bloody but courageous episode in the history of Chongqing. Between 
1930 and 1940, Chongqing suffered some of the worst attacks in the resistance war against Japanese aggression. In 1937, the city was appointed temporary capital of China. All economic, cultural, and political agencies were moved here with the hope that they would not be reached by the Japanese infantry. But the Japanese Air Force attacked. During those hard years, the citizens built this monument to show their capacity to survive and their determination to be victorious. It was a miracle orchestrated by the citizens of Chongqing that saved the city from destruction. Some survivors still remember the horrific air raids. There were bombs everywhere. There are still large holes as big as plates on the walls of the salt bank of Sichuan, known today as Chongqing Hotel. The upper part of the building was completely destroyed. The Japanese bombing had a profound effect on me. Jin Ming Shen was born in Chongqing during the war. He witnessed the terrible Japanese air raid of 1938. But in 1997, he saw the beginning of a process that would once again change the destiny of his city and would provide the opportunity for him to become one of the most important businessmen of China. Next, we'll discover how he did this and we will meet an enterprising woman that, thanks to a traditional family recipe, has become famous in all of China. I remember in my childhood, I scaled mountains and swam in the river. The mountains of Chongqing are high and the streets are steep. When I was barely two, maybe three years old, I had to climb up and down steep stone steps. It's easy to walk in flat legs. When I was a teenager, I learned to ride a bicycle and my legs were strong. I think that the strong fighting spirit the Chongqing people have come from the mountains and the river. We have inherited the soul of the peer dwellers. In 1992, Jin Ming Shan opened a small shop where he built motors. He only had nine employees. A short time later, the central government started administrating Chongqing's municipality. The city became part of an ambitious development plan promoted by the Chinese government. Thanks to this support, Jin Ming Shan became one of the biggest motorcycle manufacturers of the world. This is the Li Fan Group factory in Chongqing. It's a dream that Jin Ming Shan turned into a reality in only one decade. Today, he sells his products internationally and has factories in many countries around the world. The Li Fan Group generates profits of over a billion yuan. The people of Chongqing are impatient. They don't just hang out at a tea house. There are many ways of playing Makyong. But Chongqing's residents like the easiest way, so they don't have to play too long. Jin Ming Shan sees Chongqing is a tough city that has survived through some unthinkable times during the last six decades. But despite the changes, the city still has many traditions that have survived for centuries. Hmm. 
Yes, this one is better. I know it has a strong aroma. Su Sing Rong is the president of the restaurant chain Su's sister Hot Stew's LPD with stores all over China. Despite her high position, she goes to the market to choose her ingredients personally. Before 1997, Su had a small restaurant. But when Chongqing started being administered by the government, the growth of the city was astronomical. Now, Su owns five restaurants in Chongqing and a chain of 200 restaurants spread all over China. Hot stew originated in Chongqing. Its main ingredients are hot peppers, ginger, garlic, and animal fat. All the ingredients are strong in flavor. Pork or beef entrails are then cooked in the boiling hot sauce. Until recently, the hot stew wasn't considered a special dish. It was simply a style of cooking used by the sailors that worked in the river. But thanks to its flavor, as intense as life in Chongqing, Hot stew has become an important industry for the city. That is the first restaurant we opened when we arrived. We opened it in 1997. And it's that one. And now we have a chain of them. The hot stew is the family business. Xiang Wen Li learned the recipe for the sauce from her mother, along with basic business know-how. Even though they run a big business, Su and her daughter tend to prepare the sauce personally. You mix half a kilo of hot sauce with two kilos of beef lard, two kilos of animal fat, Su Sing Rong doesn't only run the family business, she also teaches other women how to prepare this traditional dish. In 1992, when she lost her job in a factory, she returned home to help the family business. Nine years ago, when the business began to take off, she decided to teach to others how to prepare the hot stew for free. Today, her family business generates jobs for the unemployed. There are more than 10,000 restaurants specializing in this hot casserole in Chongqing. My paternal grandfather lives in a pier next to Chatian Men in Chongqing. My grandfather owned a few cargo boats. His sailors would prepare hot pepper soup and cooked innards in it. My grandfather was a great businessman. The meat prepared like this is very good and the hot stew provided a nice vital atmosphere. They all would gather around and eat. He opened the first restaurant, Sue's Family Hot Stew in Sikiko. My mother learned from him. He was very good in the kitchen. The Chaochan Min Pier, the meeting point of the rivers Jialing and Jiangse, is 10 kilometers away from Shikiku. It was here that the first hot stew restaurant was opened. The Chaotian Min Pier has always been full of ships and commerce. For a long time, it was the most traveled part of the Jiangsei River. But during the Japanese invasion, it was destroyed. In 2005, the old union house of Hu Wang in Chao Tianmen, an important project of renewal was started. As if a greater force had protected it. The original structure, built by immigrants and merchants from Hunan and Hubei, survived the Japanese bombings. Inside the building, several wood carvings describe how people from both provinces came to Chongqing. 
Between the time of the Qing Dynasty and the war against Japan, a large number of immigrants came to live in Xiaotianmen. Oh! This area offers historic evidence that Chongqing is a true immigrant region. Yan Zhuangdong is a farmer of the Three Gorges region. Like many other farmers working in Chongqing today, he came in search of a better life in this energetic city. My wife and I came to Chongqing to work. Our son goes to school here. I hope the city keeps growing. If things don't change and I keep working hard, I can make a living here. Chongqing has attracted thousands of immigrants like Yan since the time it served as a temporary capital and later when the Popular Republic of China was born. Since then, the city has been an important industrial area. But in the 80s decade, the industrial development of the region grew enormously. Next, we'll discover how Chongqing left its dark days behind and started to become part of the Chinese strategy to become one of the world's leading nations. end of the 19th century, Chongqing had become an open harbor on the Jiangxi. It was at that time that the Western Chinese arrived. The immigrants began to build labor houses in the southern bank of the Jiangxi. One of the houses still remains located on Binjiang Street, but has become a romantic bar frequented by the youth of the city. bar's balcony, you can see the oldest pier of Chao Tianmen and enjoy the lights of the ships that have sailed the Mother River for centuries. Many say that the enterprising and stoic character of the people of Chongqing seems to have been shaped by the rivers and mountains that surround the city. Their capacity to face adversity was evident during the years of the Japanese aggression. But even before that, the city had already survived 36 years of successive attacks. In 1980, the residents of Chongqing continued with their everyday lives, but a force of volcanic proportions was about about to rear its head. From amongst the dense fog, a new city full of unknown, new colors was about to be born. Farmer So Seng Kwan and his son are busy manufacturing dragons for the spring festival. Many of the farmers make these dragons, a tradition that dates back more than 1,000 years. The dragon dance is performed in all the large celebrations. The dance is accompanied by a rain of melted iron, which gives it the name of Fire Dragon. It's no wonder that the longest dragon that Shou Seng Guan has made is an extraordinary 50-meter dragon he manufactured in 1997. That year, the country of Chongqing started being administered by the central government and became part of the strategy for the development of Western China. Since then, both Chongqing and Chengdu are key points in that strategy. 
Thanks to this strategy, the beautiful city of Chengdu has become the commercial axis of the region. Today, it dominates a market of 200 million consumers. In Chongqing, there are thousands of new opportunities opening up for its citizens. Many local businesses have gone national and industrial activities have gotten new impulse and have diversified. Nowadays, Chongqing generates a gross domestic product of around $30 billion. For people like Lixi and Sun Rui, the significance of this transformation goes beyond economic. It means new opportunity and a different way of life for their children.